Now, when we've caught him over that with technology, we will fight corruption because we ensure that the Ghanaian has the brain and the ability. Put the Ghanaian in anywhere and he will be able to manipulate any system. The, it doesn't matter whether he's going to a PhD or not. He knows how to even sit in uh, uh, Uber or Yango uh, uh, or whatever and be able to manipulate the software and pay just a small amount of money. What it simply means is that within the current dispensation of the world, where IT and innovation is ruling the world, not gold and diamond anymore. We have the children with the ability and the brain already to lift Ghana to the next level. So mm -hmm. innovation is part of us. Then in the middle of that is what we call equity. The equity is this. If you take any hundred people, Ghanaian people, you walk across here, at least 90 of them, is, or 95, if I'm not exaggerating, have nothing to do with government inter intervention in their lives. Nothing. So... The Ghanaian is a petty trader by himself. Yet, this 90 something people, our money pays over 70% of our collective money, pays for the salary of the 3 5% of the people. That for me is no equity in building a nation. That is why Ghana is poor and will forever be poor and so we change the economic order. Not by giving money to individuals, no. By making sure that a chunk part of the traders, a chunk part of the hands-on, uh, what do you call them? Apprentices that have become somebody, hairdresser, whatever, mm -hmm. the farmer, 60% of them. We must find a simple, easy way to make them have access to the resources of this country to build with their brains and energy. So that is the equity. Our system would empower every Ghanaian, every Ghanaian listening to my voice, one blind, can't walk, cross on the floor, very brainy, mm -hmm. not too brainy, it won't matter. Our system, called Ganabashas, would ensure that every Ghanaian has equity, has equal access, some access very well. to so, funding. So, 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 indeed. And Nana, if what the economics or, or the economics of the day tell us is, is right, it means you are going to inherit should you win, a very difficult, you know, situation. How do you plan to raise funds for your government? Wonderful. It's like saying that um, you have a property in Laboni. That property, you have a mortgage on it. And you have no clue. It's a big compound. It was a one-acre compound. It has a house in that corner. People, you don't know what to do because you can't pay for the mortgage. Yet, somebody sitting on the side like me comes in because of knowing how business was. Like, ah, ah, this property here, I'll come and mortgage it. I'll find a way of finding somebody who need a half of this plot. I will not sell to the person. So bring money. Let's put something together. Let me build a structure. I'll have even my rent for free for now. I'll make sure that this is because of where I'm situated. Where Ghana is, the kind is not our, our resources in the minerals. It's still there. We owe so much money, but the structure with which we are trying to repay that money, it's not going to happen. How will your structure be different? In we are informal sector mm -hmm. in this country. As I told you, 90% of us are not in any formal structured system. Only a few percentage are in the formal sector. Any economist who wants to see why and how to make Ghana work would realize that. All the developed countries have the reverse. 85% or more are in the formal sector. And only a, sm a small percentage are in the informal sector. As long as you are going to borrow money to put up major infrastructural programs, i.e. airports, mm -hmm. uh, overpasses, and all that, expansion of bigger roads, double, triple lanes, they are unnecessary. But as long as your system is such that you open your doors for free trade, you ask people to come in and they can do anything, you have not empowered your locals. If you do not change that order, your locals are the very people who are in the informal sector, so you don't have no data. You don't even know who doesn't eat today, how much business is failing, you don't know anything. All you know is the GDP you are collecting. And once you are managing it, they said you are a good government. No. So what our system intends to do 
is that we will give you funds and support you to put it into businesses, mm -hmm. corporations and cooperatives. Instead of government owning the food distribution corporation, owning the farms, we would empower the farmer or the farmer's son or you, the interested person who wants to go into farming, to be able to use the 20,000 Ghana we are going to give every Ghanaian. Bring 1,000 farmers together and they are all over the place. Put them together. You now have access to 20, B, to 20 million. With that 20 million, you bring in your excavators, mm -hmm. you bring in the combined harvesters, you bring in the, the irrigation systems, you make the dam, one dam, one village will not be done because they want to do it themselves. And now it means that we are fading away the whole and cut last petty trade farmer. The farmer now is a corporate owner in part of a corporation and he is part of his farm. Now he spends only four or five hours on the farm and he has time to do other things. So the point here is the same for the fishermen. I'm not going to worry yes, about trying to I will support the fishermen, but I want him to become the fisherman who owns the vessel that goes into the deep sea so that he can count the tomatoes, um, the, the tinapa, mm -hmm. the mac mackerel, the and the sardines, mm -hmm. and bring in the mackerel and all the things that we are importing. Because the sea we already have, what we don't have is the tools or the equipment that would go there and do the deep sea and deep farming or fish farming. 